Welcome everyone, Bernadette Doyle here. I am joined today by Steph Farr. Steph is uh, an amazing entrepreneur that I got to meet recently because you may have heard I was on a trip to Africa, which was a Virgin Unite uh, impact trip where we were meeting with local nonprofits and it was a, also a mastermind opportunity. We ended up going on safari with Sir Richard Branson, which was all amazing. We even got to do a hot air balloon ride with him. I have a lovely photograph of Steph in the hot air balloon with uh, Richard. And during the trip, Steph shared a story. And I said to her, I really want to interview you and have you share this story because there's a lot of learning and there's a lot of inspiration in it. So we'll get into that in a moment. But first of all, Steph, I just want to say thank you so much for making time to join us today and to share your story. Thank you, Bernadette. Thank you so much for having me today. And I would love it if you would start, first of all, just Tell us a little bit about you. Tell us a bit about your business and yeah, just a little bit about you to set the scene. Sure. Um, well, hi, everyone. And greetings from I'm currently in San Diego right now. Um, I'm, I've been bor born and raised in Montreal, Canada. Moved to Mexico when I was 27, where I started a business, which is Luxury Villa Rentals. Uh, we focus on private villa rentals and experiences in the Riviera Maya. I've uh, been doing that for 10 years. And as Bernadette and I, we were just talking and I was explaining how the company and the vision has evolved from the what of the business, focusing on building unique experiences for our guests, to now the why being how can we create an impact, both for our guests through building a sense of community, connection, but also attracting like-minded guests, villa owners that want to focus on creating an impact in the world through sustainability and focusing on the environment. As we are saying right now, just with tourism booming, specifically in Riviera Maya, um, we have a lot of destruction in the land. Um, the oceans are being contaminated, the reef destroyed. And something I was saying is on my conscious as a business owner is that we are part of the problem. So how can we turn things around and be part of the solution and create awareness to what's happening in the area and bring in like-minded conscious travelers and property owners that are looking to make a difference. So that's where I'm at today. And um, yeah, and here we are. Well, I love your business story and I, I, I could definitely dive in and ask you more about that, but I'm gonna focus on the story that you shared with me that led to this interview in the first place. And it really came down to, um, you accepted a very unusual challenge and the challenge was set for you by Richard Branson. So do you want to tell us a little bit more about how that came about? Sure. So there's a group of entrepreneurs. We were in uh, with the Mavericks in Necker Island. And um, the last evening, our last dinner, Richard announced that he was going to swim from Necker to Mosquito. And whoever wanted to join, we were welcome to join. But he was leaving at 6.30 a.m. sharp. As you know, he's super on time. So yeah. then meet us at the beach, 6.30 a.m. And we're going to do the swim from Necker to Mosquito. Which is and, how, how far? Um, it's about five kilometers or 3.3 miles. Right, okay. To get from Necker to Mosquito. So um, I love swimming. When I'm in Mexico, I swim in the open water. I'm not a professional swimmer, but I just, I swim leisurely in the morning sometimes. So I said, you know what, let's do it. I wanted to, you know, I had it worked out all week. So it's like... Perfect. This is a great opportunity to get my last workout before we leave. Yeah, they feed they feed you nice food and drink on Necker Island. Oh, to be said. And their their fresh chocolate chip cookies every day is just it's <laughs> disastrous. So so I was like, okay, I got to burn off these chocolate chip cookies. It's the least I could do. But also just to have that opportunity, you know, to swim with Richard. And you know what I admire about him too is he's super fit and active. And yeah. you know, to be able to just participate in a leisure activity with him is also super rewarding so last morning day of the checkout we get up at six um yannick was there from the mavericks there's about i think we we're about six of us i was the only girl doing the swim wow. uh richard was kind of nav telling us he was explaining okay you just go straight go to that rock then make a left and whatever you do just keep swimming but you're going with the current so it can't be that hard so get in the water, 6.30 sharp, start swimming, I'm swimming. And uh, we had a, a Zodiac boat follow us. 
and um, you know, just keep an eye on the whole group and mainly, I'd say mainly Richard. You know, if we all drown, it doesn't matter. He was there to keep an eye on Richard. His, his insurance policy probably like dictates that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So. Um, so yeah, so I basically started swimming and within five, 10 minutes, you know, I'm like super into it, freestyle. I look up and I don't see anyone around me. And I was like, shit, sorry. I'm like, did I go, you know, did I go off on the wrong way? So I just started treading water. We were wearing flippers and we had our mask and I'm just treading water looking around and Zodiac comes to me and he's like, Steph, you know, you're a little bit too far ahead. I need you to wait a little and the group will catch up. So I said, okay, how far are they? He's like about 500 meters. So I was like, oh, okay. So I'll just tread water. I don't know if you've ever swam with um, with flippers, but to tread water in open water is exhausting. <laughs> so I was like, either I swim back or I just keep going because I'm, you know, I'll never make just treading water for 10, 15 minutes. Mm. So I actually swam back to the Zodiac and met up with the group. And then I started swimming again and I was still far ahead. So the Zodiac came back, the guy in the Zodiac, and he was like, Steph, can you please just wait? So I said, like, okay, fine. I took my flippers off and I put them in the boat and I said, this will keep me even, you know, just going at the same pace. So I would say maybe about an hour later, made it to Mosquito. Wow. Um, I was the first to arrive. Now, Richard had his family and his, his grandkids, his kids on Mosquito. So it was really beautiful because they were all pretty much waiting to greet us on the island. Oh. Um, so when I arrived to Mosquito, his staff was there with champagne and, you know, just ready to celebrate our arrival. Richard was right behind me, actually. And, um, and then I would say maybe half an hour, 40 minutes, the rest of the group started to trickle in. And we, we had breakfast with Richard. He invited us to have breakfast with him and his family. We sat down at the table and he brings out a book and it's his log book. So every time he swims, he records his time. And of course, he always tries to beat his own time. And his son apparently had set the record for crossing in 45 minutes or 50 minutes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Which you probably would have done if you hadn't have stopped and waited. Possibly. Possibly. Yeah. So, And that's, you know, what I was thinking. I was like, you know, when, when James, he was the guy in the Zodiac, when he basically was like, hey, Steph, wait. I thought in my head, you know, what would Richard do? Would he keep going or would he wait? You know, and I thought, you know, he would definitely keep going. He wouldn't listen. You know, he would just go he wouldn't for wait. it. wouldn't wait. That's for sure. I know that about him. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So I decided to, I did the opposite. I listened, right? So it did take me longer. Um, so when we sat down breakfast, Richard brought out his, the log book and he said, hey, Steph, you know, can you please write down your time? And I said, I think it was about an hour, an hour and 20 minutes. And he just said, you know what? That's unacceptable because I know you would have made it much faster and you probably would have beat the record. And I just said, well, you know, if I beat the record, I guess I have next year. I'll do it next year. And I said, this will give me an opportunity to train and, you know, push myself even more and I'll have something to look forward to. He said, no, I'm not going to settle with that. He said, there's still an opportunity for you to beat a record. And I was like, okay. And he said, you know, no one has ever crossed back from Mosquito to Necker. So I'm going to challenge you to cross back. And keep in mind, we just had a massive breakfast. I had a buffet. I, I, I splurred, <laughs> I gorged because I just swam five kilometers. And I was like, yes. Uh, I had turned up the top chip cookies. Now it's time to reload. Yeah. Exactly. I had two glasses of champagne, two cups of coffee. I had the extra chocolate chip, fresh, freshly baked chocolate chip muffin. I had the eggs. That, and I just looked at him and I was like, oh, geez, you're serious. And he said, listen, it's a little bit more challenging because, yes, you're going against the current. And of course, the wind has picked up. But he's like, I think you could do it. And um I still wasn't convinced until he grabbed the log book and he went back to my name where I signed my time and everything. And he wrote Steph Farr, first person to ever cross back from Mosquito to Necker Island. And that was his whole assumptive close, which yeah. is that's what he's famous for to get, you know, um, 
even even political leaders to do what they never meant to do. And and I was just like, oh shit, it's in the book. And not only did he write my name, but he asked to take a picture with me. And he said, I want to take a picture with you as the first person to ever attempt to swim back from mosquito to Necker. So I back down from the challenge now. There's, yeah. there's nowhere to go, is there? So that was it. I was there was no backing down. So he was like, come on, let's go. And of course he was he made sure that I was I was uh lathered up and sunscreen, didn't want me going out in the bright sun. It was probably about at this point about 9 30 in the morning. Mm. Um and we basically set back out. Uh he was showing me a new path on how to go. And he was like, We're gonna go around this way. And he said, Look out for the coral. You're gonna go through shallow water, so be careful of the coral. Then you're gonna get to these channel markers. Be careful because you're gonna reach these boats that are gonna be crossing the channel. And then you're gonna get out to that part where the current is exceptionally challenging. That's where you're gonna need the most help. And I think he just saw the look on my face like, oh my God, what have I done? What have, like, what have I, you know, what, <laughs> what have I got myself into? But in that moment, and this is what I really admire about Richard, he put his hand on my shoulder and he said, listen, just for you attempting to try, you've already succeeded in my books. Mm. And for me, that was the piece. That was the motivation. That was the drive. And I was like, in, in his eyes, I already won. And so I said, let's do it. We're going to do this. So I set out in the water and um, actually, sorry, I'm going to, I don't want to interrupt. Um, my battery's going to die. So I'm going to. All right. We better get you moving then. Oh, sorry. Um, my computer just decided to drain. <laughs> So I apologize. I just don't want to lose you. Uh, give me one second. Sorry. Um, my oh, it's not charging. Hold on. One good. It's a good cliffhanger. It's fine stuff. Take your time. Thank you. What I loved, um, what I loved about that is how, like, it, it says so much about Richard as a leader and how he really brings out the best in people because. It sounds as though, you know, he challenged you and he like just really did it in a way to um, to get you into action and also then to say just by trying you've already succeeded. So he mm -hmm. like, he'd already he'd already basically said you were a success just for accepting the challenge. Yeah. So that must have given you a big boost. And 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 that was it too. That was the piece. He said no one's even ever tried. So you know, no one's ever made that attempt, let alone swim it. So, you know, the fact that you're here right now, you won, you've already beat the record. Yeah. And that just, yeah, that touched home for me. And um, just for his belief in me as well to just say, you, you won. And that's when I said, okay, we're doing this. We are doing this. I can't believe I'm doing it, but I'm doing it. <laughs> so, I actually started, I set off swimming and uh, everything he described was what I went through. Um, the shallow water fire coral. So I rubbed my body up against the coral. There was, I mean, the water was about this, this high and my body, there's <laughs> after that massive breakfast, there's no way I would have made it through without touching the coral. So my body was on fire. Uh, my legs, my stomach was burning. Um, got to the channel markers where the boats were crossing and um, Richard had sent a Zodiac to come back and follow me. Yeah. And we got to those channel markers. Um, now the waves and the swells were so big that the boats couldn't see me. So what the Zodiac had to do was come in front of me to protect me so that the boats couldn't, oh. wouldn't, yeah, they couldn't see me. I could, I wasn't even paying attention to the boats. Um, I was just let alone trying to survive. Um, and then I got to the point past the channel markers where he said, there's going to be a part where you feel like you're just being sucked in by the water because the swell and the waves are so big. I literally was just treading water for 10 minutes, barely able to move, not making any, any movement forward. I also in that moment had a crazy cramp 
Um, my, I just start cramping up from the breakfast <laughs> that I had. And I'm just thinking of everything that I gorged. And um, yeah, it was, it, it was pretty bad. And I was like, this is not happening. So my body's on fire from the coral. I have a crazy cramp. I'm treading water um, endlessly, not making any, any headway. What was that like in that moment? Because it, there's like a business parallel there. You know, mm -hmm. I have to speak to people who are like, well, I'm, I'm putting out all this effort and I'm not moving forward. And so there you were and you're just like, you know. Well, interesting enough, the the guy on the Zodiac, um, I can't remember his name, but he basically said to me, you know, you could stop at any time. I'm here. You could come back on and we could go back. And I just looked at him and I was like, no. No, that's not going to happen. And actually, I said, can I have some water, though? And he said, I don't have any water. <laughs> and I was like, no, this is the ultimate. Like, I'm so parched from swallowing so much salt water. And I was like, that was my final thing. I'll, I'll be OK. Just give me some water. And uh, that will give me a little bit more fuel and to be able to, you know, resume strength to continue. And he was like, no, nope, no water. I felt like that was the final test where I was like, shit. Do I just give in? And I thought, you know, in that moment, this is what went on my head. There's a fine line between giving up and surrendering. And I decided to surrender. And what did that mean? That meant I'm here to just give myself to the ocean. I am a huge advocate about saving the ocean. As I mentioned, I'm now leveraging my business to make a difference. And using that, it's business with an impact, or it's actually here's now a purpose, and we have a business backing it up. And I just, as I was treading water, I was just like, that's it. I surrender. I'm giving myself to you, to the ocean. And I put my head in the water, my body flat, and I just started swimming. And it became this magical, mystical momentum where I just started moving and moving and now all of a sudden it's like i felt like as cliche as it sounds i felt like i became one with the ocean wow. we had we had an agreement together and it was like i save you you save me and just help me get to the other side and i truly felt like something a higher for force a higher power was just carrying me wow. it was as much as everyone's like oh my god you made the 10 kilometers you made it back and how was it were you exhausted and I'm like, yeah, it was a tough swim, but it was a lot easier, believe it or not, coming back than it was even going. I just, something was carrying me. And, yeah. and um, the Zodiac, he was just following me and I'd look up at him every once in a while. He'd look at me like, you're making it, you're doing this. And he kept telling me, you know, you're just about, you got a kilometer left. You have a meter, uh, 500 meters left. And I was like, this is it. Like this is, I just had this incredible momentum and um, I could see I'm looking in the distance and all of a sudden I see I'm a, at this point, you know, I'm like, I'm okay. I'm, I'm, you know, my breath, I was able to control my breath. Everything was just stabilized. So for me at this point, the 500 meter mark, it was a leisure swim. I'm like, you know what? I'm leaving Necker. I'm going to be rushed off the island. I'm enjoying this last 500 meters, you know, wow. here. And so I looked up, I enjoyed the scenery around me and I looked ahead. And as I was getting closer to the beach, there I saw all of Necker staff lined up on the beach, all the managers just waiting and cheering me on. Oh, wow. I could hear them cheering in a distance. And that again was even more momentum and just like, wow, it was surreal. So I kept swimming and there's Richard standing on the beach. And he's like, come on, Steph, you could do it. Oh, wow. And I made it up to the beach, uh, literally swimming to the point where the sand is up against my belly. And there was Richard running into the water to help me up, oh. take my, my fins off of me. Uh, he helped me take my fins, grab my fins. And there was the team of Necker there celebrating my arrival. And I just, they had a bottle of champagne ready for me as well. And they're like, you did it. You beat the record. And it's not even that, like, I don't mean people say, how did you do the 10 kilometers? How did you, I don't mean, no, <laughs> I can't even answer that question. I don't swim. I'm not a professional swimmer. I, 
I hadn't actually swam in a year. I was injured. I had back injury. So I didn't even work out. I would say probably for eight months. So I'd maybe do yoga leisurely, um, walk, but that was it. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'm like, yes, I'm fit. I don't know. <laughs> There's definitely something, a higher power that moved me, that carried me through the ocean. Uh, it carried me with the ocean, with the waves. Um, on top of that, for me, what was the most rewarding thing wasn't about beating the record, but knowing that, you know, Richard, he'd after explained to me because everyone had checked out, everyone was gone at that point. There was maybe just a few Mavericks left. And Richard said to me, he's like, I couldn't fathom you going, coming back, I challenge you and you arrived to the beach all by yourself. I needed to be there and had my team stop oh. what they're doing to cheer you on to congratulate you for being the record. And that even more so, you know, the part where he mentioned you're successful just by trying. A man that is just has so much compassion. You know, he could have been like, yeah, you did it great. I gotta go, I'm attending to my things. Not only was he making sure that he was there, but he had his entire staff stop what they were doing to congratulate me and to cheer me on. And that in itself was another, that was for me a really moving moment as well. Mm. it says a lot about why he has the success that he has in business the way that he um the way that he treats people and the way that that he was making sure that you were celebrated and not just celebrated but supported too like sending the boat out to to be out there with you yes so. yeah yeah I just said to him like Richard just one thing I ask one thing Next time you send a rescue boat, can you please make sure there's water on the boat? See, it, that's an interesting thing because when you shared that, I was like, that is not the usual Necker Island service. No. Like, I've, I've been there a few times myself. And the thing that I always think about the island is it's how your needs are anticipated and met before sometimes yeah. you even know that you have them yourself. So, there's always water on Necker boats, but it's interesting because the way that that played out, that was actually, for you, it was like, you said it was the final test. Yes. That was what got you to go, okay, this is yeah. fun now. Yeah, because I mean, I could have been like thinking in my head, you know, I'm treading water, I'm dehydrated because we woke up at six in the morning. I didn't drink any water. I mean, I had a little bit of water in the morning. I had coffee first thing at six in the morning to give me yeah. that boost. I knew I was dehydrated. So I was like, I could be stupid right now pushing myself because i swam five kilometers already dehydrated <laughs> i then had um you know coffee and alcohol okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know so even worse so i kind of i could have looked at him being like you know you're being an idiot you're probably gonna drown because you're dehydrated and you're gonna just you know you have no energy you already have your cramps so the lactic acid's already built up um but yeah, like it was, I would definitely say a very, very powerful moment. And, and what I take from your story is like it, that there were so many moments along the way where you could have given up or refused the challenge in the first place. And so it, it wasn't like there was one thing. It was like a series of you saying yes and keeping going and moving through. Mm -hmm. really and it, yeah. And as you say, that's exactly like the entrepreneur you know, um, crazy road. It's always, you know, you think it's just a straight linear line, but it's not. It's like these million curves and ups and downs and knocks you down. And that's really, that's really what it has been like for me being in business, especially because I run a company, I'm a, a woman running a business in Mexico. So it has its challenges. It has its time where it's just like, ah, you know, I'm ready to give up. But when you are focused on a much bigger cause, that's your momentum. And in that moment, I truly felt like I'm here to swim for the ocean. I'm here to say, I'm here to protect you. And this is what I'm dedicating my business to. And this is what, you know, just as a consumer, you know, eating less meat, eating, you know, I have my Maverick water bottle or my Milex water bottle everywhere I go and just being conscious. And it's the little tiny things that we do every day that can make a difference. And and I'd love to know, like, you had this, like, mystical experience in the ocean and this feeling like that you and the ocean were one and the ocean was carrying you forward. Have you have you noticed a difference since then? Like, is your relationship with the ocean 
different now? I mean, you're in San Diego now. You 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 live near the ocean. So, what's it, has um, there been a difference since? I would say no, because the water's too cold here. <laughs> <laughs> it's too cold, and there's sharks. No, but um, when I go to Mexico, I'll I'll you know I'll definitely make an effort to swim. Um, I think it's you know I think that it too is just like when you get in the water and when you snorkel, even for divers, there's just something meditative with your breath, hearing your breath underwater, and there's nothing else that matters in that moment from what you're experiencing underwater. Mm -hmm. It's just your breath and the ocean. And those are two, our breath is, a, you know, our source to something greater, the ocean, and say we're just like a drop in the ocean. Um, we're definitely connected to water. I mean, 78% of our bodies are water. And, you know, same with our, with the earth, you know, what percentage is water? So we're definitely, you know, there is that connection. So. I've always been like that. I've always, whenever I get in the ocean, I used to swim first thing in the morning before going to work because that for me was just connecting to myself, connecting to source, um, just being able to regulate your breath and hear your breath and nothing else. It's a form of meditation, to be honest. That's how I feel when I'm swimming in the water. You make me want to swim now. <laughs> Steph, what's your next challenge? Ah, oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, it's interesting. Ever since I did Necker, ever since I did that swim, I've had a lot of people reach out to me to do other swims. You know, maybe one day the English Channel. Um, that would be yeah. insane. That but, is cold. I'll just warn you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm I know. wishing for fire coral then. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I definitely, I've always wanted to do Strive, the Strive Challenge. Actually, it's yeah. something to Richard when we were in Africa I was like I think that would be a huge goal for me is to do something like that um hike Mount Kilimanjaro that's on my bucket list yeah and um as well as base camp of Everest um but yeah it's something definitely I'm a huge advocate with saving the ocean so I would imagine staying close to that something on the water yeah well, I have no doubt. I mean, after that challenge, you you know, you've demonstrated that you you've you've got the internal muscles of like keeping going when mm -hmm. faced with insurmountable challenges. So you're you're only getting stronger. So thank you so much for sharing thank sharing you. your story. I can thank see from the comments me. people have found it really inspiring to hear what you had to say uh -huh. today. So thank you, Bernadette. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to share. Ah. Uh, Okay. Thanks. Thanks so much. Guys, I hope you enjoyed listening to what Steph had to say. And, uh, you know, just, I'd love to hear how this has inspired you. Do leave a comment below. Let us know whether you're watching us live or on the replay and, uh, we'll see you very soon in business marks from heart. Thank you. Thank you, Bernadette.